This is Jamie Boyman in front of an American flag. And a lot of other things, uh, including Nikki Capaldo here with uh, the American Red Cross, so the local chapter, East Texas chapter. And um, got a thing going on here at the Longview uh, Training Center. Uh, what's, what's happening? We are doing a shelter simulation today. We're showing what it looks like when disaster happens in East Texas, which is quite often, honestly. Uh, last year we had five tornadoes we responded to. We had a tornado threat earlier this year, last week. And so we're showing the public what a shelter looks like when we have to open them um, using a gymnasium or a, a, a partner like a, a church or a mod cob along those lines. Or a fire department training center. The fire department training center. What a perfect place for so thankful to them for letting us use this today. Yeah, and it's, uh, so I guess you, you're trying to get the word out you guys need volunteers, right? Absolutely. So we cover six counties, uh, I do here locally, and I have about six volunteers to cover those six counties, and we respond to everything from tornadoes to home fires to flooding, trees through houses. We even had a fire hydrant through a house one time that displaced a family. Uh, yes, cars through houses. Uh, anything that can and will happen disaster-wise, as, as well as mass casualty responses. Like yesterday, we were with the uh, airport practicing a drill. Um, so we need volunteers to help us do that and to provide compassion and services to our community. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, I see you have a little mock-up set up right over here. And then, of course, tons of information uh, right here. And then uh, right over here uh, is where you can sign up if you come on in. Of course, this, this is a one-day event, right? Yes, sir. We're here till 4 o'clock today, but we just wanted to showcase to the community what our disaster volunteers do. They are the hearts of the Red Cross. They go out there and provide that compassion. We had a team that was on a eight-unit multifamily fire this morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, um, providing assistance to those families and, and recovery planning. And uh, that's what we do in sheltering situations as well. Not only do we house the public when they're displaced, but we offer that compassion, empathy, as well as resources, and resources such as TDM and different uh, departments and companies come in to help share their resources as well. And we start casework while we're in the shelters. For yeah, wow. So I guess uh, people can uh, kind of contact you. If they can't come here, they can still contact uh, the Red Cross office. Right, yes. They can and contact the local Red Cross office or we have a 24-hour national dispatch line. Okay, all right. And then um, uh, people, yeah, people can contact the office if they'd like to volunteer, get signed up, talk to you guys about maybe when they're available to right. do that kind of thing. Because you, you respond any time. We are on call 24-7, 365. Yeah. If you volunteer, you don't have to be on call 24 7 365 we'll work with whatever time you have available and we're just so thankful for extra hands but disaster is always unpredictable for the most part and having people on hand trained and ready to go um, is a great asset so we train beforehand not during the times of disaster so that we can be immediately ready and work with our community partners such as fire departments emergency managers and be a support system for them as well yeah because uh, that would be a mess trying to train somebody while it's happening it's mass chaos during a disaster and yeah. anybody that's in this line of industry will tell you that so we always try to talk to partners beforehand, train our people beforehand, work together beforehand so we know who's on first. And then um, it's super easy to sign up. You can go to redcross.org forward slash volunteer okay. and sign up. If you have any complications, we're here today signing people up or you can reach out to me and I'll help get you through. Okay. All right. And then, yeah, let's take a look over here what you got uh, set up. You got... Uh, Looks like a couple of cots. Uh, obviously, if it was a real disaster, there'd be a lot more cots than this. There would right? be a lot more cots, but these are portable folder. We have two shelter trailers that are ready to go at any given time, and they house enough supplies for 50 people. We even have coffee supplies in there because that is essential during disaster. Right. Yes. So, uh, and, and feeding supplies. We have bears for the kids, activities for the kids to do too, because we don't want them bored, and, and we're trying to get them back to normal as much as possible. But over here, we have a dormitory area in every shelter. And we include blankets um, as well as toiletries because people don't have time to get those out. Such as shampoo, shaving cream, razor, washcloth, comb, and um, they're not. That totally makes sense because this is the kind of stuff that. Uh, if your house is on fire, you're not going to stop and go turn around your home. Absolutely. If your house is on fire, you have two minutes or less to get out safely, a minute or less if you're a mobile home or so RV. You could potentially have nothing. We have some people that come out in the middle of the night with their shoes, you know, and I've seen fire departments give them their shoes on yeah. site. So yeah. uh, this is normally what we give any disaster client, not only in shelters, but when we're on the fire scene as well. Um, unfortunately, we don't have pillows. So if you ever have to go to shelter, you know, I want to grab a pillow. But we will make sure you're fed, that you have three meals a day and snacks, that you have a safe place to sleep and uh, someone that give you a hug or offer that compassion and resources as well. Yeah, because, you, you know, the house is gone or whatever the disaster is, I mean, you do, you're just kind of lost. And that's exactly what we do. We provide those next steps. People have to do things such as replace their driver's license or birth certificates, 
um, everything in their home. Medication, our nurses will work with um, their doctors and pharmacies to replace that medication and durable medical equipment. And then we also have disaster mental health care because grief is a natural part of this process. And we have specialists that are trained um, in the mental health field that can work with us and volunteer with us as well. So we need nurses, we need everyday people, we need mental health, uh, people with veteran experience as well because we have our services to our forces line. Uh, we just need volunteers all the way around and we have multiple ways that people can say. And you know, it occurs to me that uh, you know maybe you know supply pillows, but folks, it really isn't worth going back in the house to retrieve that pillow if your house is on fire. I mean, or anything for that matter. I mean, people once Not they're even your out, phone. They, they, and there are people like this around who will supply you with needed things to keep you going for you know, days, right. including like lodging and something. Yes, sir. So we respond twenty four seven. So we've had multi-family fires on. Um, Two o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving, or like six o'clock this morning for our eight units, and um, my team is out there normally within the hour, um, and they're volunteers doing this, so they serve with a big heart and so much compassion for the community, offer those services. Um, some people aren't night, night people, but they always rise to the occasion, and I work with the best of the best. They take care of our community as well as each other, and that's the heart of a volunteer. So yeah, you know, if you guys want to help out, contact the American Red Cross. You can get online. Uh, get signed up for it, and they will work with whatever your availability is. Our goal is to support our volunteers with every resource we have available, so we do that with a love and compassion as well, since we're a humanitarian organization. So my goal is to support them while they're supporting the community as disaster program manager. Okay, that's just off the top of her head. She's never said that before. That's amazing. <laughs> you never know what I'll say, Jamie. <laughs> All right, thanks, Katie. Thank you. Awesome.